Hello, it's Henry Lowengard again with another E-Ray video. This instrument that I made today is uh, different from those other instruments. What I have here is a series of 21 sliders. You can't see them, but they're there. Um, and uh, each slider takes both its position and the pressure to do some musical stuff. And the position is what harmonic is it? And the pressure is how loud is that harmonic? And because of the glitchiness of the slider, which is it doesn't know when I'm touching it and when I'm not touching it, I wish it would send me a signal, but uh, you know, I will bother them later. So what is that like? Well, I'll just pick one here. I have it uh, going on harmonics from 4 to 24. And I also tune them with a slight bit of randomness in their bass frequencies because when they're all perfectly aligned, it sounds really boring. So, so let's go. Mm -hmm. So that's a typical one. You know, if I stay down here, it's those harmonics that you're kind of used to four through, you know, eight, four through seven, eight or nine, or, or 10 even, because 10 is five, right? <laughs> what am I talking about? I'm talking about the harmonics of notes. So this is the fourth harmonic here. Here's the fifth. Here's this, you know, shut up. Here we go, fourth. Here's the fifth. Here's the sixth. Here's the seventh. Here's the eighth. Here's the ninth. And so all those are pretty familiar to everyone in the tenth. Those are notes that everybody knows. Once you get to the eleventh, that's a quarter tone off of one of our notes. So it sounds a little weird already. But you get to eleventh occasionally. Twelfth is a, like a major fifth, so that's very boring. Thirteenth uh, is another quarter tone off. Fourteen, that's uh, just seventh. Fifteen. That's our very favorite major seventh, the one that we use in major sevens all the time. And there's the sixteenth. And then all these guys start to get more and more foreign. So here we go. Now I can set this up with different... You see, it doesn't know when I'm off. So what I do is, and I'm not sure when it's actually sending a message. I mean, if I actually move it, it will always send a pressure message. But if I don't know how to make a pressure message all the time, so I have a presser, press, <laughs> pressure message level. So that when that's way down like it is now, these guys stay on all the time because it thinks that you're pushing all the time. It doesn't have a good idea of when you're turned off. Oh, by the way, I can change the bass pitch here. kind of behavior that I actually want, the kind of behavior that I actually want is probably closer to this kind of stuff. I've set the limit up very high so that there's more of a chance that it will be sending a, a pressure signal that is underneath the limit that says you're playing something. But here, I had to push pretty hard to get it to play. But if I set it sort of uh, about a third of the way, see, these are actually stuck notes.
Here's how high it gets. Yeah, we can get all good bleepy blorpy if I do this thing and I really hit it hard. But I don't really want to do that. I want to make it so that I can just place my fingers very lightly on it and have it play nicely like this. But when I'm away, poof, shuts up. I may have to put in a secret trick, like down here is, the bottom of it is not really the first or the fourth harmonic, but a way to shut the thing up. Or I hope the API that should be written soon uh, will send a fingers off. It knows when my fingers are off. It needs a sort of fingers off message, which would be like the, maybe even the equivalent of sending a pressure of zero when I lift my finger up. Hey, this is kind of nice. And you can hear that beating that's going on between them. That wouldn't be there if if these weren't just slightly off in their bass frequencies. Otherwise, it would just be a really solid tone. Now, this could be an interface for making... I could also uh, sweep through this like a sequencer, and it would really sound good and bleepy blorpy, uh, because I'm getting a timing signal here that I'm totally ignoring. Um, and I could just actually use the physical timing signal that's coming out of here to help me sequence through a series of these. And another thing that I was thinking of doing is capturing the motion on these sliders and sequencing the motion on the sliders. Well, I could actually use the actual built-in sequencer, I guess. Let's see what happens when I do something like that. Oh, that's kind of fun, isn't it? Wait a minute, we'll take that last one out. Well, that's a little work that they have done that I don't have to do. That's pretty weird. Let's go and get rid of all this stuff and do a, do a nice cool one. So I can say, shut up. I don't know, kind of classic, kind of bleepy, kind of blorpy. Not so bad. All right, shut up. So, again, something that's only a few hours old. Uh, made a lot of tweaks to it already, but I'm sort of at the limit for this particular algorithm here. And I'm running 21 oscillators simultaneously over on my laptop. That's what you're hearing. 
and I could make those much more sophisticated than just sine waves. What I want to do is make them into, you know, um, um, you know, formanty kind of sounds. And when you push down, it would get more bandwidthy instead of just louder. And I might change it so that this is normal frequency and I would have 21 frequencies like what you usually are used to. And you could just pull the formants in and out with your fingers. And uh, you can't really do a spectrum on this, but it would be kind of okay. Kind of. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I really need that multi-touch, multi-timbral uh, API to do the kind of stuff I want to do. You know, being able to draw a spectral uh, stuff here. I can fake it. I can do it by just doing an XY controller and following one finger and keeping, oops, <laughs> and keeping track of the, the uh, spectral information over on the computer. And so the drawing would happen here. The computer would be remembering it. You wouldn't see anything in the interface, really. Um, and then, you know, you could build up a, a spectrogram or a Mel Kepstrom gram uh, that would be live synthesized on the other side and sequenced and whatever. Anyway, that's enough for today's happy message. See you next time. Bye.